What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Today I've got a Q&A in store for you. The other day I did a question and answer series on my Instagram story. So if you want to be a part of that in real time, make sure to follow me on Instagram and make sure to pay attention to my story. But um, I've got a Q&A in store for you guys today. Um, I did a bunch of different questions and I could only post short answers on my Insta story. So these are the full answers that I recorded when I was doing it. I put it together, figured I'd put it on YouTube so that way everybody could, you know, learn from it and get the full length answers, answers that I put out. So I really hope you enjoy it. This is part one of a two part series um, doing this Insta story thing. Um, I like doing it, so I think I'm gonna do it some more in the future. So hopefully everyone over here will enjoy and learn something. So stay tuned and I hope you guys find some value in these questions and answers and I hope you can learn something and hopefully catch some more fish. Francisco Cola asked, what pound test is the fluorocarbon you use to fish a spinnerbait, chatterbait, and buzzbait? So when it comes to the spinnerbait and chatterbait, I primarily am using 12 or 15 pound. Lately I've been using 15 pound on the spinnerbait and chatterbait and I've been using Seaguar and Vizex fluorocarbon. I really like that stuff. And in terms of, or when I'm fishing a buzz bait, I'm going straight braid. Um, I like around that 40 pound test. I feel like you can cast the 40 pound test braid pretty well. And I think with that buzz bait, you can get away with going straight braid, even in clear water. But um, I don't use fluorocarbon on top water baits. I know some guys, when they use straight braid, they can use a fluorocarbon leader, like a foot or two, and they don't have any issues. But you wanna stay away from fluorocarbon when it comes to top water because fluorocarbon sinks and it can change the action of your bait and you're not gonna get that top water bait to work as well as it can. So stick with monofilament or straight braid when it comes to your top water baits. Dallas Cooser asked, what is the best reel for under $100? For real, under $100, I'm not 100% sure, but if you're looking for a reel right at that $100 mark, I'd go with the Shimano SLX. Um, I actually have one right here. I like it and I think that it's definitely something worth having in your Arsenal. I think it's a good reel. I have it on a rod that I like to use for uh, Light top waters like poppers or something like that. So pick one of those up if that's in your price range um, I think that that hundred dollar price point is a good place to be around um, obviously if you go higher than that um, You're gonna get a better quality reel, but I think for that hundred dollar price point you can get a good reel in that Shimano SLX. Big Bass Dunk asked, how do I locate largemouth bass? So this is a really difficult question to answer in a short time frame, but what I can offer you is my ebook that I've written. Um, I can send it to you for free. It talks about how to catch more fish, keying in on what bass eat. The title of the ebook is What Do Bass Eat? If you want that, send me a message and I will get that out to you. But that ebook is totally free. Anyone that signs up for my email list gets that book. So that's available to you. DM me if you want that book and I will figure out a way to send you a link and you can get that directly to your inbox and that's gonna definitely help you catch more fish. It's gonna help you key in to what bass are eating in the different times of the year, whether it's bluegill, shad, crawfish, whatever. It'll help you key in on those different you know, foods for bass, and once you figure out where that food is and what they're doing, what the bass are gonna be eating for that time of year, it's gonna help you be in the right area, and then it's just a matter of picking the bait that they wanna eat on that day. M. Wilson 10 stated, thank you for teaching me to never give up. I like how you always do whatever you need and never give up. So I'm really glad that I've been able to teach you that and that you've gotten that out of my content. That's awesome. It's crazy, you just never know what people are gonna get out of the different content that you put out. And I'm glad that you've taken the fact that you know I try to never give up and then that's something that you can do for yourself. So it's pretty rad. Um, that's one of the best things about social media is that you put stuff out there, you never know how it's gonna be interpreted, what's gonna help other people. So it's just awesome that um, you've been able to take something like that and apply it to your own fishing or your own life for that matter. So it's pretty awesome. Thank you for sharing that and that means a lot. RSJ Adventures asked, 
What hooks do you use for wacky rig and drop shot? So a lot of my favorite hooks are gonna be owner hooks. For drop shotting, I pretty much almost exclusively use the owner cover shot hook because I pretty much always Texas rig my drop shots and the owner cover shot hook is a great one to use. Pick one that's either in the one knot or number one size and you are gonna have good hookup ratios. These things are super sharp. They have an awesome keeper on the hook up by the hook eye. And then when it comes to wacky rigs, I really like the owner wacky hook. This is in the number one size and I like to add on my own weedless whatever you want to call it on there and basically i just take two strands of a jig weed guard and then i just hand tie it on there and then that makes these things weedless and um, a little tip for you these hooks are cheaper so if you start adding your own weed guards it's going to save you money and it's really easy to do and maybe i'll do a longer video on how i do that later on sometime brock duncan asked what is your favorite topwater bait so I've had a bunch of different favorite topwater baits over the years, but right now I gotta say it's gonna be the Six Sense Mag Dog 130. This one, as you can see, it's got those saltwater hooks. So a little tip for you guys is if you go on the Six Sense website and you're looking for something and it's out of stock and they have a saltwater version, don't be afraid to pick that up because you can just change out those saltwater hooks, put some of your favorite, for me it'd be owner hooks on there, and you have the exact same bait that you would get if you bought the freshwater version. Definitely a little tactic that I had to use because they were out of the ones that I wanted in the freshwater series. So I picked up some of the saltwater ones and now I'm back stocked up on some of these Magdog 130s. Great topwater bait. Not always the easiest to walk, but once you get that thing going, you definitely gonna catch some fish on it. Um, it's one of those ones that you need to work it faster. The faster you work it, the better these things gonna work. Desert Bassin 92 asked, when are you coming to Arizona to fish? Now, when you say Arizona, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Um, I was just out of Lake Mead, which technically falls into Arizona. Um, I was out at Lake Havasu earlier this year as well in January and um, more than likely I'll be out there at some point next year and I'll be back out at um, Lake Mead again. Um, that's one of my favorite lakes to fish. Really like Lake Havasu as well. I have a tough time catching fish at Lake Havasu for whatever reason, but it's definitely a place that I'll be back to. But if you're talking about like Roosevelt or Lake Pleasant or something like that, I don't have any plans to go out there anytime soon. I don't know anything about those lakes, which probably is a good reason to go out there and just go fishing out there. But you know, for the most part, it's gonna be Lake Mead, Lake Havasu. I would like to get out to Mojave again. It's been a few years since I've been out there and the smallmouth are pretty legit out at Mojave and had a, a good time, even though the fishing was really tough out there. Um, definitely need to get back to Mojave. I might have to plan a trip for that. So I really hope you guys enjoyed those questions and answers. And um, I'm really trying to provide you guys value as best as possible, whether that's entertainment or whether that's you learning from my trips out to the lake or learning from a Q&A session like this, whatever it might be, I just really wanna provide you guys value. So I really appreciate you watching and I really hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel. Please, you know, let someone else know about it if you found value or you learned something from it. So pass this video along and please subscribe to my channel. I'm really trying to grow it and I need all of your support and subscriptions to do that. So please go ahead and subscribe and like the video and let me know what you thought of the video.